Shetty, this is Luminosity TV. Did you know that more than 80% of people in the world today wake up every morning with this underlining feeling that they're being called to do something, that they have a higher purpose of which they haven't been able to figure out yet because, well, there's all the earthly distractions and all the commitments that they have to their jobs, their families, their friends, their bills. <laughs> and so most people are just not fulfilling that call. Some even try to bury the idea just to forget about it because it hurts when their soul is reminded that they're not up to speed in their lives. And it looks like, well, time is passing, like they're not going to be able to make it in time. And they know that they wouldn't be happy deep down until they have fulfilled that purpose. So despite all their earthly desires and all their goals that's been achieved, something is always still missing. So the question is, how do you go about fulfilling that higher calling whilst managing the expectations of our earthly commitments to our friends and our families and our loved ones? And this is something that I think about a lot because sometimes you feel like you are at a crossroad, like you are having to go back and forth between what you really want to do and what you need to do for your soul and what you have to do. And sometimes this life call that we're referring to is not anything big or drastic or life-changing that the whole world needs to know who you are or the charities that you support or anything like that. It's the simple things that really makes you feel connected to your real self. Those moments that you find yourself doing certain activities, being in certain situations or hanging around those with similar mindset that it feels like you've transcended beyond time space reality as far as you're concerned nothing matters in this moment the world can just burn and you won't even be affected by it you won't even feel it because you are in your element at that time and it feels so natural to you it's a bit it's like blinking you don't have to think about it before you blink and yet others might look at you and, and be wondering, why is she doing that? Why are you wasting your time doing that? You're not going to make any money from doing that. But you know deep down the fulfillment that you're getting from what you're doing. And those moments could be as simple as playing the piano, arranging flowers, teaching children about life, helping at a shelter, or maybe even healing others with your energy. And those little magical moments that when you are doing them, it feels great. It feels you, you're satisfied. You feel fulfilled. Those moments that you feel tuned in, turned on, like someone's revving the engine of your soul. In today's world, they say, do more of what scares you. And I don't agree with that. Why would I want to do more of the things that scare me? There's already too many things in the world that are scary enough that we shouldn't even give our energy to. So I say, do more of what brings you joy, what makes you feel happy in your, in your inner vibration, what gives you fulfillment. You in particular, not you and your husband, not you and your wife, not you and your friends, or you and your children, you. What makes you feel whole again? What connects you with who you are inside? In other words, do more of what your inner self desires, not what the world expects of you to design. And I find that mothers are on the losing end of this stick. They tend to give all of themselves to the reality around them, taking care of the husband, taking care of the children, sorting this one out, um, making sure that everyone is fine. And they sometimes forget about themselves along the way and they burn out very quickly without really knowing what they will do for themselves, for their own joyful activities. What excites you? What makes you feel like a child again? What springs up butterflies in your stomach? Yes, it's a wonderful thing to give to others, but in doing so, it's also wise to give to yourself. If you're drowning right now, unless I can swim, I can't save you. So I must first learn how to swim for myself. And we all have those activities where we are the best swimmers. We just need to figure out what those activities are and do more of them so that we can be happy.
each of us have those special activities that are tailor-made for us before, way before we even got to this world that we can find resonance with. And if we deviate from, from those activities, something always keeps pulling us back in the direction of what we are supposed to do. So, and if we listen to that call and take the necessary steps, it's called being in the flow, walking the right path to finding happiness. But if we ignore this prompting that's happening inside of us, it's like swimming against the tides, which makes life very difficult. It's a vibrational mismatch, which then leads to discontentment and it leads to an uneasiness about our lives, despite the fact that we've achieved everything that we, we set out to do that is earthly. Imagine someone getting released from jail and saying that it was the best experience of their lives because being locked up in solitude actually allowed them to connect with their true nature and purpose. And now that he's out of jail, he can go out there and live a better life. And yet someone else, a beauty queen, for instance, who's known all around the world, living a seemingly perfect life in front of the social media and, and in front of the world, has fans all over, wakes up one morning and jumps to her death from a high rise building. And anyone who's looking at her will say, how, how did that happen? What else was she looking for? She, it looked like she had everything, but that's because we only see the external. And this is different from what the soul needs for its maturity. It's different from what is expected of us. And it's different from the pressure, the societal pressure that we put on ourselves daily. The worst thing is when there's so much going on externally in our lives, and there's not a lot going in. And until that is fulfilled, there'll always be a gulf, a void, something that's not complete about our lives. And the goal is to find that which brings us into vibrational al alignment with that which we truly are. So pay attention to you. Give yourself permission to ask those vital questions because the world will make you feel selfish sometimes, especially mothers. So sit still for a moment and ask yourself, truly, what do I really want? What does my soul really need? What can I do that would make me feel really happy? And the signs and the answers are always there for us, waiting for us. And what was missing all along was actually paying attention to ourselves and what we truly need. I always say that we are all a work in progress, but we must first learn to put in the work and the work is on ourselves first. Till we meet again, I wish you all of those activities that bring fulfillment to your soul. Bye for now.